Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And today's talk is all about making the 10x leap. And I've got a fantastic guest from Iowa, Steve Walsh. He talks about investing in tomorrow's legend. He's an influencer, and it's going to be a fantastic conversation about business strategy, entrepreneurship for the audience. So, Steve, welcome. Hey, Chris. Thanks a lot. Um, it's great to be on. The one thing is for this. I've written this book, Make the 10X Leap for Entrepreneurs. And I believe that, you know, entrepreneurship is so broad, but I feel that um, the one thing that I felt is entrepreneurs are running across and doing the same problems all the time. It was kind of like I, I saw them, you could see what they were doing. And I was like, you know, I need to write a book on this. And uh, my background is uh, venture capital. Uh, private equity. But um, where I started was as an entrepreneur. And I, I started with a, a company, I did a, a pet supplement company, and then I started from there. But I, I really love working with entrepreneurs, because they bring some great energy. Um, but they also have a lot of problems. And I'm here to bring them, you know, so they can bring that 10x leap. Uh, a lot of times entrepreneurs are get into the weeds. They just can't understand what's going on, why they're why they're struggling with like they're struggling. And I'm the guy that they bring in and say, hey, there's a better way to do it. And and so and that's why I write the book. You know, the book is to give them tools and some strategies to use. Um, and one of the things is the mindset's the most important thing. You know, when I interview entrepreneurs, I bring them through a, I first do what's called a predict, predictive index. And it kind of gives me an idea of who they're about. If they're a, a driver or are they um, a visionary or are they more of a strategic, are they the one that wants to be in the weeds? You know, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs that they're kind of more of the visionary. They see the big picture. But when they start getting into the weeds, they lose that. And so then I come in and, and give them a, even a bigger picture. I believe that um, every company has the potential of, of growing and scaling. It, it's just a matter of that, that entrepreneur, he's got that mindset. He's got it. You know, either he's, he is struggling with uh, giving up control. You know, I, I think we all struggle with that sometimes is giving up control. And, and so I always try to say, can we bring in people, systems that will expand where they're at now? And, you know, people, you know, it's like as an entrepreneur, you know, they, they sometimes want to do everything. Well, that's kind of the, the worst thing they can do, you know, so bring in some of the people that, that can do some of the, the things. I, I'm working with this group right now. And. That is one of the things is they're kind of almost afraid to pivot. They're struggling to get, you know, they want to, they, they know they need to do something, but they're struggling to see what it is that they need to do. And so from outside, I can see from outside, I can look in and see what, what parts may be missing. Uh, it could be capital, it could be people, or it could be just the mindset. I, I think you know, that's the, the one thing that they struggle with. And um, Chris, you, you probably see it all the time. Yeah, it's uh, what I really enjoy is, uh, you know, talking about entrepreneurs and raising capital. So uh, one thing that we talk about is, um, so you have this um, idea of, uh, you know, making the 10x leap. And so what is the driving force behind this 10x leap? Uh, why did you write it? And key takeaways? Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that and like I said, they get in the weeds. Uh, do they want to be a, I go, this is a good example. So a friend of mine, he's a, uh, it was a sushi chef. And one of the things he struggled with is he was working 60 hours a week and he wasn't seeing his family. And so he was struggling. What, what he was, you know, he had one, one restaurant. He had a great mentor. And that's where I come in. And I, I, as a mentor, I love to mentor uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, he had a great mentor. Me mentor said to him, do you want to be a chef? Do you want to be a business? 
And so he said, obviously, he wanted to be a business owner. Okay, so what do you have to be as a business owner? You have to bring in people, systems in place, capital, if you bring in capital also to grow. So what he ended up doing is going out and finding the best people he could to replace him for some of the things he did he was doing. You know, he didn't need to be a sushi chef. He didn't be the manager of the, the, on the floor. Um, so he made put in systems in place. So he went from one to eight within almost a year, probably, probably uh, 18 months, eight, eight restaurants. And so the, the biggest thing is it was really the mindset he had. A, he had a breakthrough. It's a matter of, are you going to be in the weeds? Are you going to be the day to day? Are you created yourself a job? Or do you want to be a bigger, better entrepreneur? Uh, that's the thing you look at is, what do you want to do? And, and so that's where I come into play is bringing them in to look at what they're doing and seeing is, is there some things that they can do that somebody else can do? Typically, they always say, well, nobody can do as good as them. I believe there is that person out there that can do it just as good as they can, if not better. And so, you know, it's it's a matter of um, and my philosophy is this, is that the two things that really drive a company is innovation and marketing. You know, if you have those two things down uh, strong, then your your company should grow relatively fast. Innovation is important. Um, everything else is a cost. And I think that the one thing I found is that. Most of the time, the entrepreneur has that mindset. They are great at innovation, terrible at marketing. And so then it's like, okay, if that's the case, let's see who we can get in to replace them that in that side. But it's also the thing is you have to look at what what does it makes them unique. You know, everybody always says that um, I'm better than the other company. Well, that's great, but why is that? And so what is it going to make them unique? And that is really what you hone in on. And so I always ask entrepreneurs is, are you going to be just the, the random um, company out there that produces a product that anybody can produce? Or are you going to be something big and bold and special that makes, you know, that makes it different from anybody else? And so then, they, then it's a matter of how do they work on that? You know, how do we drill off for of that and how do we market using that marketing strategy to do that? And that and that's the thing that that really gets me amped up is um, and that's part of the thing is when I did this book, Make the 10X Leap, is to get the mindset rolling. You know, I think the one thing is I have this what's called a DNA mindset um, and that's discipline, no excuse and action. You know, the discipline of of actually doing it, maintaining high standards for yourself and your team. You know, that's the biggest thing. And, and then the no excuse mindset. You know, the one thing is take responsibility for that what you're doing and make sure that your team will take responsibility for what they're doing. And then take an action. You know, that's the other thing is too. take the action for what. And, and that's going to be, you know, I, I guess, making decisions and sticking to them. I think that's if you look at really strong, high successful entrepreneurs, they'll do that. And, you know, the laser focused and they they have, I, I think, a, a strong um, play to win. You know, that that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, the next question I have is, um, you know, um, you've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and it's really interesting. And um, so uh, what are, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs could be struggling and so what was the most common piece of advice you find yourself giving to struggling entrepreneurs and talk about the common pitfalls you've noticed that entrepreneurs often fall into and how can they avoid them yeah i think you know entrepreneurs like I, i've said is that they tend to have a struggle with giving up control i mean that's probably one of the biggest things they have is you know giving up some of the control but they have to look at is what's their strong points and what is that they really they are strong in uh, and then find everybody that they can work around them those are the things give up the control um, you know it's never the problem is if they're continually in the weeds 
they never can get out and do the things that they're really good at. I guess that's their, I, I say the zone of genius, you know, where's their zone of genius. And then from there is have everybody else come around them. And that's, you know, I think the, the, the one thing is entrepreneurs are, they want to be jack of all trades. And, you know, we, you know, you, you and I know that doesn't happen. You know, they're probably really strong. Maybe they're a great visionary. Maybe they're a great operations guy um, or girl. But the thing is, I think uh, they just have to really understand that where their zone of genius is and and then um, work around that. And that's, I think, you know, that comes down to the mindset. They have a learning mindset. Um, I've worked with entrepreneurs that they come in and they are uh, – really close-minded um typically on those people i i have a hard time with because it's like you know we have to work on being open um and and looking at bringing in operations systems capital that's the other thing is too capital um i, I see also entrepreneurs struggle with bringing in capital uh, because they're afraid of giving up some of the the equity the biggest thing on that is if they look and look and bring in the right group, they're not just bringing in capital. They're bringing in the expertise that everybody else is from that. And so it's actually, if you look at the, the amount of growth that they want to do, if they really want to grow their company, it's the best way to do it. And, you know, if they can go from uh, where they're at now to 10 exit relatively quick, and do they want to exit that? It, it's you know, great way to do is bring in, bring in equity. I, I would say bring in equity versus bank. And the reason why I say that is because you're going to bring in people that have operation knowledge. You're going to bring in people that have mentors. Uh, you're going to have people that actually bring in um, teams. You know, they could potentially bring in a team for you. You know, those are the things that you really look at when you're looking at companies that want to want to invest in you. And then it's also is like, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to have a lifestyle or do you want to just 10X this company? If you want to be a lifestyle company, that's a job. And so a lot of people look at is they have this uh, company, they own this company. Is it, is it a job or is, a, is it going to be something more than what they are? And so then it's a matter of if that's the case, then it's a matter of if that's what do you need to do to get there? And so I bring in, you know, the, the people, systems, capital, you know, everything that they need to get them the, the next 10 next level. And then it's a matter of from there, it's, uh, you know, what type of lifestyle they want to be. I, a lot of times I talk to entrepreneurs and say, let's work backward. If you want to be, what's, what's your end goal? And then back go, let's work backwards from there. And that'll be the kind of the idea is, from there, it's okay. I have this goal. How am I going to do it? And there's, but it it comes down to the mindset. You know, that's the number one thing I think that I run I run across is um, that mindset and the ego. You know, egos. Everybody has an ego, and it's a matter of uh, how big it is, and are you willing it, willing to live live with uh, what's going on? You know, with your company. So, yeah. Yeah. How can people contact you and check out your book and follow you and uh, reach out to you? Yeah. So if you mm -hmm. want to go online, you can see Steve at um, Bison Equity Group uh, dot com is uh, you can contact me there. My book is on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Either way, you can get, get by my book or you can go online at on my um, website, Bison Equity Group dot com. And you can uh, get my book from there, too. Yeah, and they, uh, for all the audience, um, be sure to give uh, Steve's a socials they like and follow, and um, and be sure to check out his book. It's on Amazon, and leave a five star review. And thanks so much for coming on. Thanks a lot, Chris. It was great. Good talking.